Before the Satanic Bible, before the band Black Sabbath for that matter, there was the album The Satanic Mass. In this episode of Satan's Splain, we'll explore the history of this infamous recording and examine it track by track. Well, it's not Satan worship, it's Satanism. It's embracing the life-enriching things which have traditionally been given the devil's name. Pride, lust, earthly success, rational self-interest, atheism, humor, nonconformity, science, a passion for living, being selective about whom we love. We don't see these as shameful sins, but empowering ideals. And we also recognize the psychological power and fun of symbolism and aesthetics, so we utilize Satan as mythology's most fitting mascot for what we're about. Satan Splain, Satanic Talk with Church of Satan Magister Bill M. Magister Bill M. here with Satan Splain, episode number 38. In recent weeks, I received an email asking about some of the background music heard on the Satanic Mass album. And if I could supply the names of the pieces being played? Well, long story short, I found the information, and I emailed uh, that back to the listener. And in the previous episode, I was going to just read that letter in my response, but then I figured that the Satanic Mass album itself was worth dedicating an entire Satan's Plan episode to, so that's what we'll be doing today. This episode, in summary, I'm going to first look over the history of this album and how it came about. To do that, I'm going to read you a very informative essay from Church of Satan High Priestess Peggy Nadramia, which also includes some excerpts from the Church of Satan's internal newsletter. I'm sure many of you remember I shared some information directly from the Clovenhoof a couple of episodes ago when I talked about uh, the Church of Satan history from the early 1970s. But also, I'm going to talk about the album itself, track by track, and give you some of my thoughts, including an essay I myself wrote some years back about the last track, Battle Hymn of the Apocalypse, or Hymn of the Satanic Empire. Not originally on the original release of Satanic Mass, but added later as a bonus track. Also going to talk about my involvement in a music video we had for a remake of that song back in the day. And if you have never heard the Satanic Mass recording, that's okay, because the Church of Satan has graciously made it available for free download on churchofsatan.com. I'll try to include the links in the description. Let's jump right in with the essay from churchofsatan.com. This is The Satanic Mass, A Shot Heard Round the World by Maga Peggy Nadramia. The Satanic Mass is, in many ways, the true first explosion of Satanic thought, wisdom, and magic on an unsuspecting public. Thanks to all the press for the first Satanic wedding, baptism, and funeral in 1967, people knew about Anton LaVey and his church devoted to the devil. They had heard audio snippets of his congregation shouting, Hail Satan! LaVey's liberating philosophy had been discussed in the interviews he'd given in print, on the radio, and through television. But through this recording, Satanism was finally being presented by Satanists, and it was potentially a shot heard around the world. No one felt this as strongly as LaVey, who wanted the album out there and fast. In June of 1968, after considerable discussion, Anton LaVey signed a contract with Aardvark Recording, a small unknown record company that was owned and operated by Al Mail and Fred Kanziki, Hopefully I'm pronouncing their names right. Their names appear on the album cover for the original vinyl pressing. It can be supposed that in order to keep whatever other business they were conducting separate from their association with Satanism, Mail and Kazaki decided to bring out the Satanic Mass LP under the label Mergenstrom Records. The recordings were made in the ritual chamber at the original Black House in San Francisco on Friday, the 13th of September. The second issue of the Church of Satan newsletter, before it was named the Clovenhoof, announced that the record would be available by Halloween of 1968. However, ordering information for Church of Satan members didn't appear until the February 1969 issue. As with most shoestring projects, customer fulfillment was probably a few months late. To LeVay's chagrin, wider distribution via record stores and national publicity through magazine reviews and radio play were even farther off. While Mergenstrom did create promotional material that mentions Hector distri distributing in New York, New York, there seems little evidence that the album was distributed beyond a handful of specialty stores. 
In October of 1969, the eighth issue of the Church of Satan newsletter titled The Cloven Hoof for the very first time appeared with an exciting announcement. Anton LaVey would be presenting a very special recital at his mighty Hammond organ, leading the attendees through a series of carefully selected compositions that would illustrate the power music has over our emotions. Quote, the generation of emotion being known as the formative force in ritual magic is in no way produced more strongly than through the universal language of music. The very rhythm and meter of life itself is reflected in basic sounds which, when properly joined together, produce music. In this way, music can become, in itself, the very substance of a magical ceremony, unquote. And on a side note, I think... Anybody who has a passion for any kind of music would have to agree with that assessment. This evening was to be a ritual lecture and concert all in one, and LeVay's enthusiasm for the idea was evidenced by the assurance that it was only the first, quote, in a series of magical infusions. Here is the tempting invitation to the event. From the newsletter. The high priest knows the sounds and their proper placement in order to produce such a working on Wednesday, November 19th at 9 p.m., he will conduct the first in a series of magical infusions, utilizing music as a vehicle for the transference of satanic power. Dr. LeVay will select a series of musical compositions, arrange them as to their proper placement relative to certain situations and events, and through the medium of the church's specially designated Hammond organ, bring forth the music. Ranging from the celestial limits of sweet serenity, to the grossest trumpetings of tyrants. The purpose will be to evoke the necessary emotions to open the gate onto varying existing frequencies. Do not expect a staid and brittle organ recital, as this is not a musicale. Do expect to hear mergings of corny old popular music with Strauss waltzes, Mazorsky with Sousa, the organ grinder with his monkey, and the tigers crashing through the bush. Do expect to hear the undulating pelvis of the burlesque stripper and the court of Louis XIV. The muezzin, that's somebody who calls a prayer at a mosque, calling the faithful to prayer and the plaza de toros. Expect to hear a child leaving its toys for a journey to slumberland and the circus maximus. Expect to hear Harry Lauder and the shadow. Expect to hear the entry of the gods into Valhalla. And... The Barbershop Quartet. In short, experience the magic of Orpheus. Dr. LeVay knows well the magic of Orpheus and Apollonius and Pygmalion, and this is the real magic. And that's where the excerpt ends, and the essay continues. Unfortunately, this wonderful event never happened. And the Satanic Mass, while being sold to church members through mail order, was still not available in stores. It was November 19th, 1969. The musical, the musical presentation was scheduled to take place that evening. Anton LaVey opened a letter from a longtime friend containing a clipping from a current issue of Variety magazine. Scrawled across the top of the clipping were the enthusiastic words, You are very in. It was a column covering recent record releases with occult themes. Vincent Price's Witchcraft and Magic is mentioned with its History of the Black Arts, as well as the Coven album, which, with which every Satanist is familiar. On a side note, uh, to any of you out there who think that the first Black Sabbath album in 1970 was the start of the use of occult themes in rock music, well, I'm afraid to say you're quite wrong. Never mind the fact that the Coven album opens with a track titled Black Sabbath, before the band Black Sabbath was in existence, but... That's a topic for another time. The latter, and th this was the Coven album they're talking about, the latter includes a Satanic Mass track with instructions, and this was really what made LeVay see red, because his album was not included in Variety's column. Here's the excerpt from uh, Variety magazine. Rock rolling into a cult as discs, Nitaries, yen, that old black magic. The recent batch of astrology records is only the beginning of a rock and roll journey into the occult. With Halloween as an incentive, 
The stargazing craze has mushroomed into discs on witchcraft and spawned nighteries with supernatural themes. The extension was logical. Astrology and fortune telling have been closely linked. For the latter, mystical tarot cards are often dealt to determine one's fate. Naturally, then, tarot recently opened in New York's Union Square as a new night spot. The uniforms and decor were tailored to create an atmosphere akin to a camp of gypsies. Tarot, yeah, apparently a nightclub in uh, New York at the time. One room at Tarot houses a light machine designed to cast spells. Hypnotic patterns whirl around the room, while slides of mysterious ladies with glowing eyes pop out of nowhere, all put to a pounding rock beat by live bands and records. The Sanctuary in Midtown Manhattan, that's another place, was set up as a Church of Satan. Okay, more on that in a moment. Plastic statues of fallen angels and flashing red lights simulate an inferno in the disco that was once a genuine church. The Dance Macabre continued at a Black Sabbath bash at Lietuala last Thursday. Again, not the band Black Sabbath. That came later. This was an event that was called a Black Sabbath bash. Uh, when DJ Jerry King spun discs for patrons disguised as famous sinners, witches, and other bizarre characters. And Price's Witchcraft, this is a review of the Vincent Price double record that came out at that time. Long associated with supernatural films, Vincent Price is now breaking into the disc market. He narrated a double disc album for Capitol Records entitled Witchcraft Magic, the newly released Set contains a history of the black arts and hints for do-it-yourself spellcasters. And if I could just pause the essay here and just mention something on a personal note. When I was out in Los Angeles for the June 6, 2006 High Mass, I was in a record store uh, with my friend, Warlock Crowclaws, and we stumbled across this Vincent Price record in a store. It was that same record. And he really wanted it, even though he had no turntable at home. So I told him, well, I have one and I can transfer it, make a digital copy for you. So I copied it, remastered the sound, cleaned it up and all that and burned CDs. And he personally gave away copies of the CD to Church of Satan members who were at the event. It was kind of his way of saying thanks, uh, being happy to meet everybody. And if you remember the show that used to be on Radio Free Satan, Confessions of a Wicked Witch with uh, Magistrate Egrain, those Vincent Price excerpts played on the show were taken from that record. I was the producer of the show at the time, and I put them in. Anyway, let's continue on with the excerpt from Variety Magazine. A group of homebrewed witches and warlocks known as Coven now have a rock LP on Mercury titled Witchcraft Destroys Minds and Reaps Souls. One side of the disc has various rock terms dealing with the occult, and the other has a 13-minute black mass. The text of the, quote, satanic mass is printed on the dust jacket along with instructions that warn against its use by, quote, anyone not thoroughly studied in black magic and not aware of the risks and dangers involved. A few titles from the LP are Dignitaries of Hell and Choke Thirst Die. The combo, which features a femme singer named Jinx, has practiced witchcraft for four years. So that's what Variety had printed. Again, no mention of the Satanic Mass record. Bastards. LeVay had done his best to get review copies sent out to larger record companies, their distributors, and some radio stations, but felt strongly that the professionals he'd engaged to produce the LP had fallen down on the job and failed to respond to his own sense of enthusiasm and urgency. In magic, timing is everything, and the Variety column made it clear they had missed the boat. The last thing he wanted to hear was that he was very in. He would have been satisfied with the assertion that he was leading a trend, but never wanted to be seen as following one. Anton LaVey was furious. He immediately canceled the musical event. In these pre-internet days, this entailed calling each member who had reserved a space for this incredible opportunity, but this was also prior to home answering machines, so people would be showing up at the Black House from near and far, and they deserved an explanation. 
What follows is from a handout Central made available to those who had to deal with the disappointment of this cancellation. Tonight's special music ritual is cancelled. The attached clipping from Variety will give the reasons why our special ritual scheduled for tonight has been cancelled. Over a year ago, our recording, The Satanic Mass, was completed and ready for distribution. Before that time, there had never been such a recording, and members of the Church of Satan felt much pride in knowing Dr. LeVay had once again created a first. As it now stands, our recording still cannot be bought in stores. But there has been sufficient publicity on it due to Dr. LeVay's conscientious and enthusiastic promotion at every opportunity. Others whose braggadocio far outweigh their talents have been shrewd enough to pick up on this idea and have employed dynamic promoters to sell and distribute their inferior recordings. Incidentally, the, quote, Satanic Mass and the, quote, Church of Satan, mentioned in Variety, refer not to us, but to others who have picked our brains. Many people worked long and hard on the Satanic Mass, which was done entirely as a Church of Satan project. We are certain you who read this feel resentful that credit which should have been given to your church is now going to others. But your exasperation is infinitesimal compared to our high priests. Considering the nature of the class scheduled for this evening, we know you will understand that Dr. LeVay could hardly bring himself to perform a magic ritual which was to have included parts contained in the Satanic Mass, as well as many obscure and bizarre pieces. The procrastination of those responsible for distribution are also responsible for the cancellation of tonight's special ritual. Most would attest to Dr. LeVay's patience, consideration, ability to uh, roll with the punches, and turn an otherwise disadvantage into an advantageous situation. And some may criticize him for a lack of magical ability in, his inst in this instance, but as you know, before magic can be employed, all logical physical means must first be exhausted. In this case, he, he placed the importance of his loyalty to those involved above his desire to see the recording succeed. There have been many confrontations in which it has been asked why the recording had not been distributed, and there were always excuses, which he kindly accepted. Rather than admit to himself that those involved would let him and the church down, he pushed it out of his mind and waited patiently. Dr. LeVay is not a machine, and this has been most disheartening to him. Therefore, we trust you will understand and excuse any inconvenience this cancellation may have caused you. There is not much that can be done to repair the damage that has been done, and it's unfortunate that this great disappointment may well lead to a calloused attitude on the part of Dr. LeVay when it next comes time for him to illustrate the patience and consideration which in the past has been known to you all. So that's the end of the notice. Continuing with the essay, while LeVay was not in the mood to run this event or socialize that night, he did sit down and pen some notes, possibly for use in the above cancellation, and vented on the situation. This excerpt gives us a rare view into Anton LeVay's thought process as it pertains to the movement he created. People sometimes ask how he dared found a church devoted to Satan, how he summoned the energy and drive to keep it going. As you'll see below, he never doubted himself for his sense of timing. From Anton LeVay. Nine months ago, I sat talking to a small group of people. What I had to say was predicated upon what I knew at the time to be magically correct. I suggested that copies of the Satanic Mass be sent to every magazine that had a record review column for potential inclusion. I suggested that recording companies be sent copies. I suggested that trade papers be sent copies. In short, I suggested that all persons in a position to play, promote, review, and or talk about the record be sent copies. I was then informed that you can't do that because then all the people will come into the stores to buy the record and there won't be any records in stock. We must wait until we get the right distribution. We must wait until we have a large enough stock of records to interest a big distributor. I bickered and argued and ranked for the better part of four hours over my point, that the most important thing to be done was to let the world know that such a record existed. Then the demand for such a record would necessitate its very existence. 
I suppose that now it will be said that I should have reasonably said or written what I am doing now, and those concerned would have understood. I knew every bit as well what I was doing then as I do now. The only difference is that the others are prepared to listen and heed what I say now, whereas they weren't then. This is what is commonly referred to as closing the barn door after the horse runs away. Now, there are several new recordings on the market which relate directly to what we had done over a year ago as a totally exclusive undertaking. It is to be automatically assumed that the public, if and when our recording hits the stores, will think we are jumping on the bandwagon. If I were a believer in astrology, I would scream that my Aries pioneering nature was being submitted to the greatest of all possible affronts by this total lack of recognition for that which I had spawned. Not being a stargazer, however, I can only take great umbrage knowing that had I been heeded, had I thrown a tantrum, had I insisted that things were to be done my way, we would have a recording on the market and have been recognized as the first. If this had failed to come about, then I would have had no one to blame but myself, and, needless to say, we would have been no worse off than we are now. The copies of the record that were sent to Playboy, Mr. Gartz, and many others which bore fruition were those which I had to single out, insist on being sent, and in general spoon-feed, like pablum in order to get them into the hands of the aforementioned. Why were copies not sent to every major recording company? Now, at least if they did nothing but copy us, we would have proof of having placed the purloined material in their hands. Under the circumstances, I truly feel that the record would have been sold to a major company had it been handled with a fair amount of business acumen. I feel, as I imagine I would have, if the Satanic Bible were to be printed and bound and sitting around in some warehouse for over a year, while everyone else published Satanic Bibles. Then, after someone in the outfit found the key to the warehouse, allowing for the public release of the books, the public would say upon viewing my Satanic Bible, well, it looks like LeVay has finally decided to print one about his church. There's no time to talk. There's only time to act. The post offices are still in business. The mail still goes through, at least occasionally. I want every conceivable agency involved in media to have a copy of the Satanic Mass. That's the end of LeVay's letter. In finishing the essay, I wouldn't have wanted to be Mail or Kenzaki that night, but as you can see from the references to the album producers, LeVay refrained from naming them or getting them getting very professional with his anger. In fact, I'd say he was more angry with himself for not pushing his own agenda, for not insisting on his own vision of how the record was to be promoted. It should be remembered that this was all happening one short month before the release of the Satanic Bible. I'm sure LeVay was on edge about that too. Other references confirm how impatient he was for the book to appear. After this bump in the road, LeVay's association with Mergenstrom continued on a friendly and business-like basis. Contrary to popular fiction, Mergenstrom didn't originate as LeVay's private label, and the producers enjoyed their share of the profits from the album until signing over ownership of the company and its only title to LeVay in June of 1976. But the Satanic Mass album was never a runaway seller. After initial pressing of 1,875 copies, an additional 1,000 copies were pressed every year for the next three years. For a total of 4,875, LeVay was probably right about the delay in widely public publicizing the album. Quote from LeVay, The possible sales of our recording have diminished considerably compared to what they would have been when ours was the first and only thing of its kind. If you own a copy of the original Mergenstrom vinyl, take a careful look at LeVay's biography on the back cover. If it says he was a physical researcher, as opposed to psychical, with that typo, then you have one of the original pressings. Despite all this, the Satanic Mass album was always highly prized by Satanists and collectors, and new old stock found its way to occult emporiums, where it did better, than it would have in record stores. Herman Slater sold some copies at The Magical Child, I guess that was his place, and when he ran out, negotiated with Central to collaborate on a cassette release for sale 
through a store and catalog, but this never came to fruition. In 1994, a compact disc version was engineered and released by Amarillo Records. A bonus cut, the LeVay playing the Hymn of the Satanic Empire or the Battle Hymn of the Apocalypse, was included on this version. Reptilian Records and Mephisto Media took the title over in 2001, initially releasing 1,000 copies on CD and promoting it through Radio Free Satan. On a side note, um, I remember when this happened. Radio Free Satan was started by what used to be the uh, Mephisto Grotto, it was a Church of Satan Grotto in Chicago, and with the help of Reverend Chris X at Re- Re- Reptilian Records and some others, we saw a new CD release of the Satanic Mass and Satan Takes a Holiday. So that's what the Mephisto Media was about. Adversary Recordings was born from this project and moved the Satanic Mass to this label for subsequent pressings. They designed a vinyl picture disc and released it on Halloween 2005 with a limited run of 999 copies. These later versions are now collector's items as well. The Satanic Mass CD went out of production sometime in 2009. While the liner notes on later versions cite the influence this album had on heavy metal bands, their imagery and lyrics, there is no rock music here. It's old-timey music, classical music, carnival music, it's LeVay's music, and it's there to support and enhance the ritual texts. The original pressing admonishes the listener to darken the room, burn black candles, envision the celebrants as the mass is performed. This album was meant as an experience as well as a revelation about the true nature of Satanism. Like the philosophy that spawned it, it works only for a select few. It would have never been a chart buster or top of the pops, but it did change the world. And that concludes the essay. We're going to take a short break right now. When we get back, we're going to go through the album track by track. You are listening to Satan's Plane. You are listening to Satan's Plane, Real Satanic Talk with Church of Satan Magister Bill M. For questions, comments, and correspondence, send an email to bill at satansplane.com. In 1966, Anton LaVey created the Church of Satan, marking the beginning of the Age of Fire and Year One Anno Satanus. In 1969, he published The Satanic Bible, codifying Satanism as a religion, the first time it's been done in human history. In the name of Satan, ruler of the earth, king of hell, come forth from the pit, bestow the blessings of hell upon us, for we are your children, and we invoke thee this night. In 2001, I was appointed High Priest of the Church of Satan. In 2007, I published the Satanic Scriptures, further defining and expanding on Satanic philosophy and greater magic ritual. Hail Satan, full of might! Our allegiance is with thee! Cursed are they! The God adorers! And cursed are the worshippers of the Nazarene eunuch. For the past 50 years, the Church of Satan has stood as the sole organization to define and defend Satanism as a religion. And though pretenders to the infernal throne have come and gone, we have stood the test of time and will into the future. Visit churchofsatan.com for more information and read the Satanic Bible and the Satanic Scriptures. Knowledge is the solution for ignorance. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Magister Bill M. here with Satan's Plane. Visit the official website at satansplane.com. You can also hear all of the Satan's Plane episodes there. You can listen to Satan's Plane as well on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, other places as well. Please give Satan's Plane a like and a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. For all questions and comments, send me an email. Bill at satansplane.com is the email address. In this particular episode you are listening to now, it's all about The Satanic Mass, the infamous 1968 album recorded at the original Church of Satan headquarters. Personally, I have one of the vinyl picture disc versions. I know some collectors try to get 
the first pressing. I also have the CD pressing from Mephisto Media. Again, some collectors tried getting other versions. CD versions were made from some copy of the vinyl. You can tell because you can hear the scratches now and then. I've heard some Satanists say they like that for the nostalgia factor. I could see, though, a, I don't know, a cleaned-up remaster would be better, but anyway. In more recent years, Magistrate Templey Rex uh, Blanche Barton found an unopened box of, I think, 50 records, which had been sitting in storage for years, and uh, made those available to members. Now, the recording itself is not in the public domain, though, as with a lot of recordings, there are freeloaders who've created and uploaded illegal copies. Cleopatra Records even printed an illegal copy. Apparently, they're known to do such things with other people's recordings. Regardless, we, the Church of Satan, have made the recording available for free download as MP3s from the Church of Satan website. I'll try to include that link in the show's description. If you do listen to this recording, my advice is to treat this like a ritual, which it is. So it's kind of going on to what I said before the break. You know, don't give it a half-ass listen. Don't put it on just as background noise when you're, you're doing your laundry or whatever. The original instructions were to listen to it in a dim or dark room, maybe using some black candles. Or I would say just, you know, give it a listen with headphones. Even if, you, even if you've heard it, uh, you know, a million times. Try to find a time and a place where you can listen to it without interruptions. Especially if you're a Satanist who has never, ever participated in group ritual before. I think a group ritual is something every Satanist should experience at least once in their lives. But, uh, you know, it's I know it's a pain in the ass to try to find people. Maybe listening to the Satanic Mass in the meantime, in private, is the next best thing. So let's look at the tracks on the album. Track one. Track one uh, covers the first side of the vinyl version. It is the title track, The Satanic Mass. It runs just about under 20 minutes. Now you'll notice that this is called The Satanic Mass. It's not called The Black Mass. The Black Mass is a ritual that had, you know, it's been around for many centuries in different variations. The Satanic Bible has a whole chapter about this. You can also find a version of that ritual, kind of adapted for us, called Le Mes Noir. That's in the book, The Satanic Rituals. So what is the Black Mass, really? Well, the Black Mass is essentially a blasphemous parody or inversion of the Catholic Mass. Now, as mentioned in the Satanic Bible, it's a popular misconception that the Black Mass is the main ritual for Satanism. It's not. It's just a blasphemous parody of the Catholic Mass. It, it can be a thrilling form of psychodrama in and of itself. And if you have been a victim of religious programming from Christians and want to help deprogram yourself, maybe just doing an over-the-top blasphemous ritual like the Black Mass can help. So that is the reason why we include it in the Satanic Rituals. So if that's the Black Mass, then what is the Satanic Mass? Well, we have lots of different ritual practices detailed in the, the Satanic Bible and the Satanic Rituals. But what this track is, is it's a mix of your basic standard Satanic Ritual from the Satanic Bible and a few extras. So we begin the album. We begin the Satanic Mass track. It starts with some background music and the ringing of the bell, something we do to open and close a ritual. You're setting up this session where you have a different frame of mind, so it's important to mark when that begins and when that ends. The bell is said to purify the air, and there is something to be said about that psychologically. You ring the bell as a call for attention, as a way to say, hey, we're going to do something now that's psychodramatic. It's not part of the mundane, casual, day-to-day -day stuff that you do without emotion. There's something hypnotic about bells, too, I would say. And uh, then, from that point, it goes on with other introductory things that you see listed in the Satanic Bible. The invocation, reading of some of the infernal names, and so on. Two of the three different conjurations from the Satanic Bible are here. Conjuration of Lost and Conjuration of Destruction. Also a couple of the different Enochian keys. Now, granted, in a standard Satanic ritual, 
you would choose just one of the conjurations and one of the keys. But again, this is a satanic mass. It's a collection of things pieced together in a different way. And finally, at the end, you hear a satanic baptism with one of the baptism rituals from the satanic rituals. Now, whether all of these recordings are word for word exact with the books, I personally don't know. I haven't really sat down and done an exact comparison. But in summary, that's the Satanic Mass track. It's crazy how they managed to cram all of that into 20 minutes. And again, this record was made before the Satanic Bible or the Satanic Rituals were in print. So essentially, this was the first time the world at large was given access to you know, real Satanic material. As mentioned in the first half of the show, there was the album by the rock band Coven in 1969 titled Witchcraft Destroys Minds and Reaps Souls. That's the album I said which starts with a track titled Black Sabbath and it ends with a track titled The Satanic Mass. Again, released after the actual Satanic Mass with Anton LaVey was recorded. Now, I own a copy of this Coven album myself and I just like it for its novelty value. It's it's like an over-the-top satanic aesthetic. Um, Coven's track that is called The Satanic Mass is much more like The Black Mass than what I just described. So a difference that especially sticks out is how much Coven's version is really centered around devil worship. They'll say lines like, you know, you, you may abase yourself before the only true God. And our Lord Satan, and save us Lucifer. They even chuck in a line from Crowley, which is, you know, Thelema, not Satanism. And you don't find these sorts of lines of submission on the Church of Satan's Satanic Mass album, or for that matter, the Satanic Bible, because even within the context of psychodrama and suspension of disbelief, Satanism is still about the worship of the self, and even when you use mythology for the psychodrama of it all, it doesn't have to be these worshipping notions to contradict that. Satanism is not just inverted Christianity. You know, it's not. But, you know, you would have no way of knowing that if you only had a coven album as your only source of Satanism. Now, back to the Church of Satan's Satanic Mass album. The next several tracks from the album, taken up side two, are essentially the beginning pages of the Satanic Bible. And again, this album was re recorded and released before the Satanic Bible was actually published. So with the next track, we have the uh, Satanic Bible's prologue, followed by the Book of Satan. So all the verses 1 through 5 are read through that. I guess technically these should be called chapters 1 through 5, and the verses would be the numbered lines in each, each section. And I say that because the Holy Bible is broken up into books, and each book is broken down into numbered chapters, and then each of those chapters is broken up into numbered verses. And the Satanic Bible, of course, does not follow that format, with the exception of the first of the four parts of the Satanic Bible, which is the Book of Satan. Regardless, they're referred to as verses on the album cover, so yeah, okay, we'll call them verses. As I said at the start of the episode, I got an email asking specifically about the musical pieces played in the background as LeVay reads these particular parts. That email was from Renee. I knew one or two of the songs, but I wasn't sure on the rest, so I asked a bunch of Church of Satan members to see if anybody could give me an answer. Thanks again to the members who were able to give me the information, especially Magister Jean, who hosts the Classical and Orchestral Musical Show on Radio Free Satan, which is Vox Satani. It's great having a resident expert in classical music. You can find resident experts on just about anything among Church of Satan members. One of the nice things about membership. Anyway, to read you the answers I gave Renee, first of all, uh, with the prologue, she didn't ask about the prologue, but just to add it in there, the music you hear in the prologue is Wagner's Siegfried's Funeral Music from Act 3 of the opera Goethe Dammerung, and the reading of the Book of Satan, Chapter One, or Verse One, as it's called again on the on on the album, 
What you hear in the background is Beethoven's Symphony No. 3, Eroica, or however it's pronounced, second movement. Book of Satan, Chapter 2, Beethoven's Symphony No. 7, second movement. The music you hear in reading of chapter or verse 3. What you're hearing is the end of Wagner's overture to the opera Tainhauser. Uh, verse 4, Wagner's Die Valkyrie, magic fire music. I took German in school for years, and many German people still get angry at me for having an American accent. Like, they hate my pronunciation. Oh, well. They can all kiss my star-spangled banner ass because the music in the background of Chapter 5 is John Philip Sousa's Stars and Stripes Forever. Now, while I'm talking about the Book of Satan, there are the people who always whine that these lines were taken from Ragnar Redbeard's Might is Right. And that is true. The Infernal Diatribe, as it's called, was taken from that obscure, long-out-of-print, copyright-expired book from the 1800s from a pseudonym author. I've seen people whine that the, the Satanic Bible was completely stolen from there, which is ridiculous since the Book of Satan makes up a whopping what, five or six pages of the entire book? I did the math. It's about 2.2% of the pages of the entire book. Also, LeVay never hid the fact that it was from there. Redbeard was listed on the book's dedication page. LeVay wrote the introduction to a later re-release of Might is Right. And frankly, I'm glad he extracted what he did. Because if you've ever read Might is Right or have tried to read it, I mean, it, well... I give this analogy. This is the analogy I use. Imagine a band has a greatest hits album and it's really awesome. Like every track is amazing and you, you love, love, love this compilation. And because of that, you decide to go check out the rest of the band's catalog. And it turns out that their catalog is like 20 albums and it's filled with a lot of crap. Lots of repetitive sounding things, tracks that you can't relate to at all. And you think to yourself, oh, I should have just stayed with that greatest hits CD. Because that pretty much was, you know, all the good stuff of theirs. It's the only one you really have to buy. Well, anyway, that analogy I just gave is pretty much how I view the Book of Satan versus Might is Right. I own Might is Right. I don't regret buying it. I don't regret reading it. But again, that's like how it reads to me. I'm glad Anton LaVey didn't just... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad he didn't just stick to the purely blasphemous parts. He, he included some of that, which makes sense for a satanic Bible. But he also gets into the selected lines that are truly satanic and in line with the actual satanic philosophy. In any case, like I said, I'll run into people who still whine, eh, that's not a proper citation. I guess these people are expecting the, like, the satanic Bible to have end notes and a bibliography. Do the Bibles of any religion have those? I don't recall the Holy Bible having a spot where... After the part about Noah's Ark, there's a little superscript number up in the air at the end of the text and a footnote saying, oh, well, you know, this story of Noah's Ark is actually taken from the Epic of Gilgamesh, and this part of the crucifixion is taken from this other pagan myth, and so on. Not to mention that that would just ruin the mystique and aesthetics of the Satanic Bible, in my opinion, which is probably why the publishers chose to remove the dedication page from the Satanic Bible. Actually, I guess I had to do with a miscommunication of uh, removing a part from the dedication paid from the satanic rituals, and the publishers decided to take it out of both. That's what I heard. Anyway, wanted to get that rant in there. So that's where the original tracks from the satanic mass end. On the CD re-release, there is one more track which was added as a bonus track, and that track is the Battle Hymn of the Apocalypse, or Hymn of the Satanic Empire. I'm just going to finish the episode talking about that. Some years ago, um, I made a new sheet music transcription of this song. And I wrote up a short article with some history of the song. You can find both of those on churchofsatan.com. I'm going to read you some of that article I wrote now just to finish up this episode. Being the founder of a Church of Satan, the author of a Satanic Bible, and the conductor of a Satanic Mass album, it's no surprise that Anton Zandro LeVay also employed his skills as a musician to create a Satanic hymn. In 1968, LeVay composed the Hymn of the Satanic Empire, or the Battle Hymn of the Apocalypse. 
The piece was played at satanic ceremonies worldwide in the decades that followed. The lyrics were published publicly in 1990 as an epilogue to the authorized biography by Blanche Barton, The Secret Life of a Satanist. Church of Satan Magister Reuben Radding transcribed the piece for standard musical notation, and copies were originally available for sale through the publication The Black Flame. In 1992, the same transcription was published in Anton LaVey's essay compilation, The Devil's Notebook. LaVey himself didn't formally record the piece until sometime in the 1990s. That recording later appeared as a bonus track to the compact disc re-release of the Satanic Mass in 2001. Rather than singing the lyrics in the melody given, LaVey used his synthesizers to play the melody along with drum sounds and additional sound effects over which he boldly spoke the lyrics. Now, going back to that sheet music transcription from Magister Radding, as great as that sheet music was, I personally felt that there was room for improvement. Now, that is not a dig against Radding and his work at transcribing that. It's not a dig at all. The thing about sheet music you have to realize is that it's not necessarily as simple as, oh, this is a recording of the song and therefore a sheet music transcription of what you hear is either correct or it's incorrect. We're either playing these notes or not. Unfortunately, it's not always that simple. You can have two different musicians transcribe the same piece and have it transcribed in slightly different ways. Much of that comes down to a decision of what information you want to include. I noticed in Radding's transcription, the chorus had the chord changes listed, whereas the verses were described as no chord or vice versa. Um, in any case, I remember it was technically correct, but I felt that I could transcribe and supply chord changes that would work for that part. So that, you know, musicians of just about any instrument could read the universal lead sheet and play it. The 1992 transcription had the main melody transcribed, but I wanted to throw in some of the harmonized notes that you can hear um, Anton LaVey playing on the recording. And Radding did it in the treble clef, which is the standard for melodies, but I wanted to additionally make a bass clef version for instruments that read the bass clef. Also, I wanted to include guitar tablature and bass tablature, since most musicians these days are not pianists, but guitarists, and most of them don't read sheet music, but they do read guitar tablature. Now, for those of you who aren't musicians, I'm sorry if what I just said sounded like a bunch of jargon. The bottom line is that two musicians can take the same recording of music and choose to convey that in written sheet music in slightly different ways. Anyway, those PDFs that I made are on the site. When I published the article and the sheet music, my good friend, Reverend Colonel Akula, said, Hey, Bill, I can't believe you didn't mention the music video in that article. And I probably should have. You see, back in the 2000s, uh, there was a Church of Satan member, LaRue de la Chais, who composed music, and he also did his own rendition of the hymn. Several of us got together to make a music video for it. Magister Matt G. Paradise filmed and edited everything. We recorded a lot of it at uh, Black House North, which is the nickname for the house of some prominent Church of Satan members in Canada. I spent all this time with Colonel Akula. We were filming a scene where I pretend uh, to be a mugger or a thug, and he basically drop kicks me, um, you know, hip throws me, did a couple of different things. My years of studying Aikido <laughs> came in handy there, learning how to fall properly. But uh, I was still aching the next day, to say the least. That's what happens when uh, Colonel Akula is using you as a stunt. <laughs> partner pretty much uh i remember magister michael rose saw me in pain the next day and he sarcastically said from the table well bill i hope you learned a valuable lesson but yeah there was a music video which you may still be able to find on youtube so to wrap this up and come full circle anton lavey's rendition of that song him of the satanic empire is what closes the later CD releases of the, the Satanic Mass album as a bonus track. Or is it the very last track? Hmm, keep listening. There may be a hidden track on your copy. 
Let's end this episode here. I'm sure there are other details of the satanic mass that I didn't mention in this episode. But still, this should hopefully give you more than enough information. If not, well, at the same link on churchofsatan.com where the MP3s are, you can find a PDF of the liner notes that come with the album. So enjoy the satanic mass. Until next time, hail Satan. You have been listening to Satan's Plane. For more information about the show, visit the official website at satansplane.com. And for more information about Satanism itself, visit churchofsatan.com. This episode, copyright 2023, Magister Bill M.